Well, good evening. I'm glad you're here for our Wednesday night time together. I want to talk to you about prayer. And uh, so we're focusing on prayer at this time in our church and praying for our nation, praying for victory over the virus, victory over the violence in our nation, and for an awakening for God to move. So as we talk about that, I want to talk about another side before we get into prayer, and that's the thing of, of knowing how God views us and knowing our relationship with Him and the fact that He is for us. And in fact, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 is where I want to begin. It's what shall we say in response to this? If God be for us, who can be against us? It's Paul writing in Romans 8, 31. And so to understand what he's saying is, he's saying, what shall we say in response to this? He's been talking previously about the difficulties of life, the problems of life, the things that come against us. And in that, we have these different problems, difficulties, situations that come, and he talks about our relationship with God, and he says this, that how am I going to respond to these things, the difficulties, the problems we have? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's begins to put this point forth and emphasize it. So the fact is God is for us, which means his people, then it means that God is for me. I'm his child. As we think about that, just remembering this is God's word. This is what he says about us. This is the eternal word of God. And our heavenly father loves us, cares for us, is fully committed to us. And so we need to understand that especially in view of praying to God. Uh, it's like this throughout the Word of God, that God would speak of himself to people like Abraham and declare, I am with you. Speaking, I am the present tense. God, I am with you. God is with you. Said the same thing to Isaac, same thing to Jacob. He spoke this to these individuals, letting them know that he was with them. Why? Because they were going on a journey. They were going through life and they faced difficulties as they trusted and obeyed him. He would bring them through because he was with them. Exodus chapter 12, when the Israelites were in Egypt in bondage at the burning bush, when God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush, he said, I'm calling you to let my people go to go to Pharaoh and, and to tell him, let my people go. They're my people, the people of God. And Moses says, who am I that Pharaoh would, would even listen to me? And the Lord says, I will be with you. In fact, he says, I am with you. Understand that God is with us, that he is for us. As we understand that, as Paul has said in Romans 8, 31, he said, if God be for us, who can be against us that God is on our side? This has been true from the patriarch on through Joseph's life, on through David's life, Daniel, uh, right on through the Old Testament, the book of Haggai. It, the Lord says, I am with you, that I'm the Lord God. I am with you. And to do this work, to be able to stand against the opposition, the problems, the difficulties, and be victorious. The fact is this, even in the New Testament, Jesus made this powerful promise to us. And he said that I am with you, I will never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. The fact that he is with us. So why is this repeated so often in scriptures? It's Old Testament, New Testament. The reason it's repeated so often is because doubt and fear constantly come against us. We have problems in life. We have difficulties in life. We've faced obstacles. We're serving the Lord, living for the Lord. And there's these things that come against us. And we have to realize that doubt and fear come in going, well, if God is for me, why is this going on? That's what Gideon asked. If, if God is for us and God is with us and we're the people of God, why are we going through all these problems? Well, let's understand that. In spite of the problems, God is with us. And the very fact that he's with us gives us victory over whatever we face as we trust him. So we're tempted at times to wonder if, if God is with me, is he in tune with my prayers? Because I'm praying, I don't seem to see a change sometimes. If, if, if he's with me, then it seems like that 
I don't sense his presence right now. The fact is this is, you know, am I out of God's reach? Am I out of touch with God? No. The fact is this, the word of God tells us he holds us in the palm of his hand. We can't go by our feelings and our emotions. We go by the fact of what the word of God says in those times we don't feel like God's hearing our prayers. We don't feel like God is near us. We don't feel like he sees what's going on. The fact is this, Romans 8, 31 says this, if God be for us, and he is, who can be against us? So what does this cover for us? i will give you some things, and you might want to write down these other scriptural references. Well, what does this cover? The fact that God is for us, who can be against us? Well, God is for us when we're going through hard times. God is for us when we're going through hard times. Romans 8, 15. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship or adoption, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. By, by the spirit that lives in us, we're able to say, Abba, Father, or as my kids say, Daddy, or Dad. The fact is this, God is our Father. He is our Abba, Father, our Daddy, God. So in this, that, that God is for you when you're going through hard times and when you, and you are battling fear. The fact is God is for you and God is with you because you're his child. So how about this? Isaiah 43, verses 2 and 3. When you pass through the waters, and it's not just talking about going and taking a dip. It's talking about when you pass through difficult times, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, the really tough times, this overwhelming season, this is going through the waters you're going through. You're, if you walk through water, it's a little bit more difficult. When you go through a river, you've got to swim. And also when, when you go through the river, you pass through the river, they will not sweep over you. You will not be overwhelmed in overwhelming situations because I'm with you. He goes on to says this, uh, when you walk through the fire, the the really the time when the enemy turns up the heat, life turns up the heat, the difficulties turn up the heat, said the flames will not set you ablaze. You will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God. It, it's all kind of many times when it's just the overwhelming circumstances, overwhelming situations when you're bombarded, that God is for you in these times. So here we go. Number two, God is for you when you feel others have forgotten or forsaken you. God is for you when you feel like others have forgotten you or forsaken you. And, and Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16 is a great promise. Can a woman forget her nursing child? In other words, talking about the nursing of the child at her breast that's attached to her right there. And can a woman forget about her nursing child? or not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. But the fact is this is a prophecy, a messianic prophecy, that a woman might temporarily forget the child nursing because of things going on, or the fact that she's pregnant because of the things going on. But God says, I'll never forget I'm never distracted like that. And the fact is this, he said, I've inscribed you uh, in, on the palms of my hands. He's talking about the fact that it's the crucifixion of Christ where he still bears the nail scars in his hands to never forget us. They're proof of his love, the proof of his care for us, his concern. Psalm 37, 25 is another scripture you might want to write down. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread, their children begging bread. In fact, that God doesn't forget us. Hebrews 13, 5. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? People are usually a part of the problem, the difficulties that come in life, the, the things that happen. The writer of Hebrews is saying, God has promised. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. What can I say? The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? See, so number three, and God is for us when, when, when we face physical, material, or emotional needs. In fact, whatever need we face, God is for us when we face this. 
at Exodus 15, verse 26. I am the Lord who heals you. Talking about physical needs or emotional needs. Uh, Jeremiah 30, 17. For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 24. Isaiah 53, 5. Uh, by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. So we have these promises. Romans 8, 32, back to Romans 8, verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Talking about God did not withhold anything from us. He gave his son. He gave his all in all. He's not going to withhold anything from us. So he got us for us, for me, for you. When you face physical or material or emotional needs, whatever it is, that when you, they're pressing around you, when you're dealing with them, He's just for you. So God wants you to know right now that He is for you. So who can be against you? So I want you to understand this. So why is this important? Because we're talking about prayer. So we'll get back to it. It's important because what I believe determines how I pray. What I believe determines how I pray. If I believe God is for me, it changes how I pray. If I don't believe God's for me, it changes how I pray or whether I even pray. So here we go. So how I pray determines what I receive. Also, Jeremiah 33, 3. Might want to write this down. Look at it later. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not of. Call unto me. Call to me, cry out to me, pray. And I'm going to show you great and mighty things. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to reveal things to you that you didn't know. See, God is for you. See, if I don't believe this, then I might not pray. Good chance I won't. If I don't believe that God is for me, when I pray, I'll pray only little prayers that are insignificant because I don't believe they're going to be answered. But the fact is this, if I believe that God is for me, and that he is with me, and that he is my father, and I'm his child, then when I pray, I make my request to him, I can pray bold prayers that are bigger than I am, but they'll never be bigger than he is, because he is God. I can begin to pray bold prayers for my family in this season, to have victory over the virus, and victory over the violence that's going on, and to see an awakening in our nation. We can begin to pray bold prayers to God, to transform to bring revival, to bring a season of refreshing, of awakening to our nation and to the world around us. And we can see a turnaround. We have power. We have authority. God is for us. Who can be against us? In fact, is, we've got to believe that. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I love the fact that God is on our side. He's on your side as a child of God, on my side as a child of God. So I encourage you to pray. I encourage you to look over these scriptures I've given you. To take Romans 8. Begin to read through it. And when you get to verse number 31, you begin to boldly declare, what shall we say in response to these problems? Oh, if God be for us, and he is, then who can be against us? Let's pray right now. Father, I thank you for this season of prayer. You have given your church, your believers, your children, authority in prayer. In fact, what a great time right now that we can gather, to gather together as a family, two or three, or we can gather together with friends and pray together and bind together. Or we can take our prayer walk around our neighborhood and pray. Or in our house and pray. And we can pray with boldness. And we can pray with confidence because you are for us. And I thank you for that. And you answer our prayers that we pray according to your word and your will. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon in the Lord.